We began our journey this morning at the cradle. We saw the shepherds come, and then later on the wise men, and we've just considered the ministry that Jesus has had, and now we arrive at the cross. And consider, before we take communion, Christ's sacrificial death. But before we linger at the cross, uh, permit me to take you back to the cradle for a moment, or to the infancy of Christ, and uh, notice with me what I call symbolic prophecies. Uh, these were not prophecies spoken, but sort of symbolic, and sometimes I think we miss them. For example, uh, look at Christ and his infancy. When the shepherds came to uh, view the baby, they came because of the word of the angel. The angel said to them in Luke chapter 2, verse 12, This will be the sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. No other baby would have been wrapped in swaddling clothes. Perhaps in a manger. It was pretty busy. But, but uh, the key uh, identification the angel gave was the swaddling clothes clothes. Uh, swaddling clothes were long strips of cloth. In our translation today, as it was read, uh, those they mentioned cloths. It's always plural. It wasn't a blanket, but swaddling clothes were the strips of cloth used in the embalming process that was used that day. And so what the angel was saying to those shepherds, you will identify this Messiah because he's going to be wrapped in the clothes of death. And so I've often thought, well now, you know, here they are in this uh, cave or this uh, 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 stable. Where would there be claws of death? And as you study the customs of the Jews, that when you went on a trip that was a distance from your home, you prepared yourself in case someone died. And so uh, they would wear, particularly the man would wear swaddling clothes around his waist, underneath his outer garment. And so if they came upon some instance where someone died with the group that they were traveling with, the swaddling clothes would be there and they could begin the embalming process. It's not like today you call 911 and the coroner comes. You know, the family had to take care of things. And it appears that when, um, they, when Jesus was born, perhaps a, a labor had come on early. They weren't prepared for it. They're out in the stable. And so the baby's born. What are they going to wrap the baby in? And apparently Joseph then took his swaddling clothes off from his waist, and they wrapped the baby in the cloths of death. And that became the, the key identification for the shepherds. You'll find the baby wrapped in the clothes of death or the claws of death and uh, lying in a manger. It, it was sort of a hint, a, a symbolic prophecy, I would say, that he was wrapped in the claws, uh, claws or the swaddling clothes of death the moment he was born. Because it reminds us he was born to die. Well, move with me from the infant to when he was a toddler. When he was a toddler, about two years of age, the uh, wise men came. And we read in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, that when the wise men came, they presented him with gifts of gold and of incense. And that makes sense. Gold, they needed the money, and incense was a nice gift. But then it says of myrrh. And of course, myrrh was the key spice used in the embalming of the dead. So all of a sudden, once again, we have this little hint, this prophetic prophecy that uh, this young child came to die as an infant wrapped in the cloth or the claws of death and as a toddler being given a gift that is used in embalming people. Isn't that interesting? Now between the uh, prophecy, the hint of a prophecy of the shepherds and uh, the hint of the prophecy of the wise men, you have a very straightforward prophecy. It happened eight days after Jesus was born. Remember they took him to the temple and uh, there they met up with Simeon, and Simeon gives a prophecy, a spoken prophecy. He looked at the baby and he said, now uh, the baby is a sign that will be spoken against. But the interesting thing is that he turned to Mary, and he said to Mary, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Well, what about Joseph? Joseph was standing there. 
But if you remember from Scripture, after the age of 12, we never see Joseph again. And it is believed that, Scripture doesn't say that, but we believe he died at some point. And so obviously Mary would be the only one that would stand at the cross. And so the prophecy was to her that there'll be a day when you will stand at the cross and your heart, your soul, will be pierced. So now let's move back to the crucifixion day. And you see these prophecies fulfilled. Let's go toward the evening of that day at Christ's burial. In verse 39 of John 19, we read, Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and... Oh, myrrh. Oh, that's interesting. That when he was born, they brought myrrh. And now when they embalm his body, they brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. That little hint of a prophecy was fulfilled. Uh, Verse uh, 40. Taking Jesus' body, the two, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, two of them wrapped it with the spices, the myrrh, in strips of linen or swaddling clothes. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the very Christmas time, the hint was he has come to die. And we see that now fulfilled at the cross, that he came to die. And when he died, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and with myrrh as the spices. But uh, let's go back a few hours at the crucifixion. In John chapter 19, we read something that uh, shows us the fulfillment of the prophecy concerning Mary. Beginning at verse 25. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. It would be hard for any of us to imagine what that was like. To stand at the foot of the cross and see your son being crucified and you can do nothing about it. Her soul was being pierced. Mary's prophecy was being fulfilled. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, his disciple took her into his own home. Geneva Showerman writes, it this way. I think that I can almost see that small Judean town that night 2,000 years ago when Christ the Lord came down. The inn, the shops, the flat-topped homes where weary pilgrims slept. The nearby softly rolling hills where fleecy flocks were kept. And then I think I see the sky aglow with the heavenly light as angel messengers proclaim, the Christ is born tonight. I see the shepherds hasten to where the baby lay, a stable bear, a manger bed, but God with us that day. And when I think of Bethlehem, I think of Calvary, from the cradle to the cross, a lonely hill, a rugged cross, a death of agony. For he, the babe of Bethlehem, was born his life to give, and willingly he gave his life that you and I might live. We've come from the cradle to the cross.